Stephanie, Endgame. I was about four years old when I approached my father and mother who were sitting at the kitchen table one evening. I asked them, how do people get to heaven? And they replied by asking for God's forgiveness and inviting Jesus into your heart. Right then and there, they led me in the sinner's prayer so that Jesus could live in my heart and I would go to heaven. I remember that evening in great detail as it was a powerful moment for me, even at that age. My entire family were very devout evangelical Christians. Even when my siblings and I were playing together, we would talk about theological issues. I remember my little brother being worried he wouldn't get into heaven because he felt he wasn't as good as the rest of us. I remember thinking that it was by faith that we believed God would save us from eternal damnation. It didn't matter that we didn't feel as good as other Christians, we had to believe by faith that Jesus would save us. I grew up belonging to a Pentecostal church, and before I was even a teenager, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. While I don't remember the exact details of this event, I was able to speak in tongues for almost as long as I can remember. I sincerely believed that I was speaking in another language. We had heard stories of Christians going overseas without knowing any of the language and being able to use their gift of tongues to communicate. I had always assumed that one day I would meet someone who would recognize my gift of tongues as their own native language. I even took an interest in studying other languages just on the off chance I might discover that language. My family belonged to a small Pentecostal church of about 50 people. Despite having the name Pentecostal, the congregation was actually very reserved and resembled more of a Baptist church than a Pentecostal one. Apparently, at one time that church was quite lively. However, during my youth, it was a very conservative church, where we sang the same hymns every week, and very few people even raised their hands during the service. This was a far cry from the Pentecostal churches where people were dancing and yelling out during the service. Throughout my teenage life, I felt very close to God. I would get up early in the morning and pray for each of my classmates. I felt challenged to spend more time reading the Bible, making sure I spent at least an hour every day in devotions. I believed I had heard God tell me not to date a girl I liked at school. I physically felt the Holy Spirit refresh me when I was at the point of exhaustion. I even saw a vision of Jesus reaching out for me when I felt life was too difficult. When I was 16, I joined Street Invaders, which was similar to Youth with a Mission at the time. For Street Invaders, we spent one week training at Bible College where they taught us Christian apologetics, which are basically arguments for believing in God. After that, we spent a few weeks working with a church somewhere in Canada. I had a very powerful experience during the week at Bible College, and I felt that God had anointed me to do His work. Before joining Street Invaders, I was terrified to speak in front of 30 people at my home church. But after this event, I spoke to a crowd of over 300 people in a church service. I believe this was proof of God's intervention in my life. After graduating high school, I attended a Bible college where I completed a four-year Bachelor of Theology degree. There, I thought I learned the answer to every question I ever had about the Bible and God. I learned about proper biblical interpretation, Christian history, and apologetic reasoning. After graduating, I went to university to get a three-year Bachelor of Arts degree in philosophy, where I studied medieval philosophy, which was essentially Christian philosophy. Then, I worked for a Bible college for roughly 10 years and continued to attend university to earn a variety of other degrees. At one point, I even became a licensed minister. During my time at university, I informally debated many atheists. My major in philosophy was largely religious, so it provided me the opportunity to debate atheists that also attended the classes. In my mind, those debates were largely one-sided. I believed I had an answer for every question and criticism of the Christian belief. The atheists I talked to were drastically underprepared to debate Christian apologetics, and my responses to their arguments always seemed to be met with silence. I attended many formal debates that were hosted by the CRU, formerly called the Campus Crusade for Christ. At every single debate I attended, I thought the Christian speaker was clearly the winner of the debate. I was often disappointed in those debates because the individual speaking on the atheist position would always seem underprepared to me. They never had any decent arguments. 
I remember thinking that the debates were a waste of time because the CRU can never bring in a strong enough opponent. Looking back at these events now, I wonder if it was because of my cognitive dissonance that I thought the Christian speaker always won. Throughout the entirety of my education, I avoided taking natural science courses whenever possible. I avoided them because I thought they were assuming evolution was more than just a theory. I took three introductory natural science courses over my entire education. One in astronomy, one in geology, and one in geography. Those courses didn't really talk about evolution at all, and none of the professors were anti-religious that I could tell, unlike some of my philosophy professors. But I did learn that the Earth and the universe was much older than 6,000 years. That was fine for my belief, since I knew that for God, time worked differently, as in 2 Peter 3.8, with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. I figured it would be very possible that from God's perspective it was analogous to a week to create the universe, when from our perspective it would be much longer. Additionally, imagine telling someone 4,000 years ago about a measurement of a billion units. It would be just beyond their comprehension, so God obviously needed to speak in a language early humans would be able to understand. I did eventually change careers in order to leave my job at the Baba College. This was due to the behavior of the governing board of the college. I did believe I was where God wanted me to be, but after the board decided to fire all the teaching faculty, I quickly realized that God's will could be overridden, or at the very least disobeyed, by those trusted to keep it. The faculty that had been fired had given everything they had to that college. When I talked to the board about their decision, they said, well, if we are wrong about what we think God's plan is, then God will still take care of them. This decision of theirs did serve a couple purposes for me. One, that I needed to determine my own career path, because even if I trusted God for my career, that trust could be easily overridden by another person's will or poor decision. And two, it revealed that there was no definitive method to verify an interpretation of God or his word. As I questioned the decisions that these men of God were making, I began to find holes in my own beliefs and interpretations of the Bible. What followed were four foundational errors that I discovered in my own beliefs. In the next video, I will talk about the first foundational error I discovered. See you then.